All right, so let's actually go ahead and set up the laser. Now everything here moves the way it should and, uh, well, stuff isn't really properly secured like it should be. Uh, that's not how you're supposed to use these things. Yeah, have to be a bit careful I don't break the ribbon cable. Just get those out of here and stick them back in later. Still have quite a few more of those so I can tidy the whole thing up. Now at first glance you might be able to see that uh, this whole assembly here looks kind of bent. And uh, yeah, it is. If we take a closer look at those screws, well, excuse the digital zoom, but uh, <laughs> I don't really have anything different on this camera. And this thing is just, yeah, you can just, just see the whole thing just flex and move all over the place. I found the issue. Uh, this plate here is held down by those uh, pegs down there. And what essentially has happened here is that they uh, uh, misaligned all of the holes that are on here by uh, a, a few millimeters meaning that this thing won't slide all the way to there uh, why everything was kind of crooked and bent uh, looking i'm not going to bother to that and trying to uh, fix that i'm just going to take this thing out at some point and uh, cut myself some uh, metal probably it has this uh, sort of honeycomb uh, like uh, structure in it and install that in here. There are also quite a few things that I'm going to add to the laser. First of all, this is a 3D printed uh, nozzle for the air assist. There's a tiny hole down there, which should be enough. Uh, if not, the laser is just going to take care of that. And you hook up a uh, compressor to here, or a quite strong blower, and it's going to make sure that no dirt and debris can go up and onto the lens. Also, it cools whatever is being cut underneath. The second piece is this thing and uh, this thing. Now this fits on here. You just stick that over here like so and that uh, helps to align the beam because you can uh, insert a small piece of either laser cut or printed uh, sheet of paper which has a, a target uh, symbol on it and that's going to help you to align the beam perfect center which uh, is definitely what I'm going to do because it, when you get this thing, this thing has been moving around because of all the shipping and whatnot, so the beam is not going to be aligned at all. The second piece is literally the same thing, but it just clips on like so. Right, so before we go ahead and go and have a look at the back of the machine and what's to do there, let's just go ahead and take off uh, this protective piece uh, on the acrylic. Now usually if you have this thing, there are holes drilled on here to line up with those uh, screws in here, but for whatever reason this one uh, does not have that. Presumably they changed something at some point and yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a pretty nice thick piece of acrylic and then a nice orange. Yay! Yay! That already looks a lot nicer. Let's go to the back of the unit and have a few looks there. And we are in the back. And you can already tell, yeah, that is not fitting at all. Hmm. But, uh... That probably shouldn't be an issue. I can either 3D print some uh, pieces that can slide in there or there. Initially, I was thinking about uh, just making an adapter where you just stick uh, this thing on with the hole it has. But <laughs> I think that's a pretty bad idea. And uh, since they changed quite a few things, even the blower is a little bit different, uh, yeah, that probably won't work anymore. Alright, now since this is a laser and uh, it gets hot, uh, we need some sort of cooling for this and this thing uses water cooling. In this case, uh, you can uh, use just distilled water for this since, well, it comes with a pump and everything. And uh, I'm just using this big old paint bucket that I got from work, uh, which is completely spill proof. If you tip this thing over, there's nothing coming out of it. And it even has this nice big mechanism to hold the lid on. So 
So yeah, distilled water only. I have about 10 liters in there. I still have another five lying around. I don't know if I'm going to add it yet. I'm just gonna check how it goes and I haven't seen anyone who has gotten that far in as actually overheating the laser. Let's actually go ahead and get into this uh, blower. Well, there are just two screws holding that uh, cover on I was talking about. So let's see if the wiring has improved or is still as atrocious as it uh, was in a lot of videos. I'd highly recommend anyone who gets this thing to do this because uh, this could be a really potential fire hazard. It already looks very, very similar to uh, what I've seen in those videos. Oh, oh, isn't that fucking great? Yeah, this is the best wiring I've ever seen in my life. Check this out. Yeah, to anyone doing some sort of wiring, uh, never, <laughs> never ever do this. There is no solder or anything in here and I can just uh, pull on here and I'm just gonna get the entire wire out. Just, just look at this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Are you fucking kidding me? This is dangerous. This is seriously dangerous. Because if that thing hasn't uh, got proper contact, it can also uh, be a potential fire hazard. And uh, yeah, I never let this thing run without any supervision whatsoever. Yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that and just uh, put some proper heat shrink tubing on there and solder all of these uh, cables together. Let's hope that this is actual copper and not this garbage uh, copper coated aluminum. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure and uh, I really want to know if they used copper coated aluminum or not. And the easiest way to just check that is use a lighter, get close to the ends of it, and if it starts melting, then you have copper coated aluminum. And the lighter doesn't want to turn on. There we go. And uh, no, that is uh, proper copper. It's not copper coated aluminum. If that were copper coated aluminum, that whole thing would just melt and it doesn't. So at least they use proper copper, which is really, really much a relief. All right, that is a million times better. I used some uh, heat shrink tubing and I just soldered the wires properly together with some solder and then covered the whole open contacts of heat shrink tubing. And there we go, a safely wired up blower for the laser. And yeah, pretty decent air output. That's nice. That's definitely gonna take well care of. I'm thinking about maybe adding some silicone on the inside just to make sure that this thing seals properly if I put something in there to make it just sit really hard against the laser. But eh, maybe in the future, but not now. Not now. And I'm at the pump. Now the blower, um, I just plugged it into one of the outlets on the laser. But I am not going to do that with the pump. You, the reason why is, well, you have a pump which uh, has a 230 volt cord going into it. And that thing is also grounded. So if I plug that into the laser, as you can see, the ground is not making contact with absolutely anything. So there is no way I'm sticking this pump, which is submerged in water, into one of those outlets so that it's not connected to ground in any way. That's seriously dangerous. With the fan, it's fine because, well, there is nothing where what I can actually touch. The whole thing is pretty much encased in plastic, so if something goes wrong, that's fine. But with the pump, that's just a bit of a safety precaution. And as you can hear, it's already running. If I pull one of the hoses out, that's for the water return. There we go. Oh, hey, spider. But appears to be dead. Oh well. So... Let's actually hook up the laser and see what happens. All right, so time for the first power up and see what happens. Yeah, it homes itself and the fan for the power supply kicks on. That's good. And I actually always like to move the hose out a little bit so that you can actually hear the water pouring so you know it's flowing or not. Probably not gonna get a flow meter or something like that for this. 
But what I will get is a temperature indicator telling me how hot the water is getting. But I really don't think that those 10 liters eventually will get the laser tube so hot that it will break itself. Uh, it took me quite a while to get this thing to work properly. I kind of have that uh, sort of like that in here. I'm gonna mount that properly on the back somewhere where I have uh, just a regular pneumatic connector for it. But uh, yeah, it's on the flash off. I've got a, I tried a piece of cardboard before, but that didn't turn out so well because it started to misalign itself. So now I've got a piece of glass in there, and uh, the laser's still on pretty damn low power. I mean, even though it's pulsing, it's it's really not uh, really any that into any high power. And uh, yeah, that with glass actually seems to turn out just fine. So yeah, uh, no way I'm going to open this thing while that thing is running, because if the beam gets reflected anywhere. Yeah, you don't want that hitting your eyes, especially if it's some other person that's using it. I'm actually generally thinking about adding an interlock in this that uh, just goes in a well, series with the switch. Meaning if you open this thing up, it just going, it's just going to go ahead and turn the laser off, nothing else. So, yeah.